You are not completely incapable. You just need to learn how to organize your life and I'm here to help. Sometimes it works out and sometimes it don't. Sometimes you win some. Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about something that is truly life-changing and I'm speaking from personal experience and that is creating a balanced and sustainable schedule for your life. So if you're constantly feeling like you're overwhelmed or like you're playing catch up, then this is the video for you. So I'm gonna be sharing some helpful tips on how to create a schedule that's productive and also protects your peace. Before we get started, comment below if you have ever made a schedule before and let me know how that process went for you. Did it work for you? Is it something that you struggle to keep up with? Or do you just feel like you have it kind of down and you need to make a few tweaks? In this video, I'm gonna be sharing five tips to help you maintain productivity in your schedule, but also maintain your peace. If you know anything about the content that I make, I'm all about balance. While yes, it's important to be a productive princess, at the same time, it's also important to have that balance so that you can enjoy your life and have some peace in the process. I am also including a guide to creating your color-coded Google Calendar during this video as well. So I personally love Google Calendar. If it's not on the calendar, I am probably not going. So I'm going to show you how I set that up and how you can color code it and set reminders and all those things to make it a super useful tool for you. But let's go ahead and get into these steps. The first thing that you're going to have to do is define your priorities. Ask yourself what truly matters to me at this point in my life. For me personally, it's really trying to find a balance with my career goals and also maintaining my health through self-care and also nurturing the relationships that I have in my life. So the best way to start is just pick about three to five different priorities that you have in your life, write them down, and try to identify the order of which one you think is going to require the most of your time to which one you think is going to require the least amount of your time. By having that visually mapped out in front of you, it makes it a lot easier to see where your time is going and also where you would like to be allocating your time so that you can reflect and see what changes or adjustments you need to make in order to make your time more effective and make every single thing that you're doing actually work for you. The second thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is time block your day. I promise you time blocking has made a huge difference in my life because it takes out a lot of the guesswork. I don't have to think about what I'm supposed to be doing and when because I know I've locked off this specific amount of time to focus on this specific task. So the way this works is you're dedicating a specific amount of time each day or each week to different areas of your life. Whether that's exercise, working, meal planning, anything that basically really contributes to your lifestyle that you do on a regular basis. This really helps you feel like you're in a consistent flow without feeling like you're constantly switching gears and your attention is not as divided, which will provide a lot of mental clarity and help you to avoid brain fog. I was noticing that I was kind of bouncing around in what I was doing when I was cleaning my house. So I would like start cleaning in the bathroom and then I would take the clothes to the laundry room and then I would get distracted in the laundry room and start organizing the shoe cabinet. And basically I would never finish one space because I was always bouncing around, devoting a little bit of time to each thing, but never mastering or fully completing anything. And I feel like that's kind of how it can work in life if you're not following a time blocked schedule. So you need to allocate specific time to specific areas of your life. One important thing to always make sure that you include is some buffer time because realistically, things do not always go as we expected. I know I'm someone who kind of thinks like things aren't gonna take as long as they actually take, which then makes me end up being late. That was something that I really wanted to work on in 2024 was being on time for things. And what I realized was I can't shove everything into my day. I have to be realistic about how long things could potentially take and allow myself that extra time to complete things. So that is where a Google Calendar comes in. If I finish up before the time block runs out, that's great. I can go to something else or I can move on to the next task. You kind of have that freedom and flexibility, but at the same time, you've given yourself a bit of focus and a bit of direction. So let's go ahead and jump into this Google Calendar color coding tutorial, and then we'll hop back into the video. Okay, y'all, the way that I love Google Calendar at this point, it's giving obsession, but I promise you this will make such a positive impact on your life. Now, there's a few different ways to make your Google Calendar calendar work for you. I'm going to start off with the simplest way, which I feel like is the most sustainable. The only thing with this one is you don't have as much ability to customize and share different calendars, but it still gets the job done. So for example, let's say on Monday morning, I want to do my workout. So I'm going to do an 8 a.m. workout here. So I will just go into my calendar and I will type in workout. 
But remember, you want to make sure that you are very specific about what type of workout you're doing, where you're doing it, all that kind of stuff. So here on the little part where you can add like descriptions and things, you can say what type of workout you're doing. So for this Monday, I'm going to do a mat Pilates workout at home and I'm going to use the Peloton app. So now there is literally no excuse when Monday morning rolls around that I'm like, oh, I don't know if I can work out. I don't know if I should be working out because it's right here in my calendar and all the specific steps are there as well. Now, here's where your notifications come in. You can notify yourself a certain amount of time before this event occurs. I like to do 10 minutes so I can like stop whatever I'm doing, make sure I'm dressed for the workout, all that kind of stuff and get ready for what I said I was going to do for the day. So I can simply click save and now that is on my calendar. Next up, let's say Tuesday evening, I have, or Monday evening, I have my coaching clients. So I'm just gonna type in a block here for coaching clients. I don't have to add any specifics, but I could if I wanted to. And then over here, I can just come and switch up the color. These are kind of like the default colors that come. Um, I feel like my coaching sessions are like very calming. So I'm gonna go with a lavender color for those. And then let's say on Tuesday or really every day of the week, I wanna make sure that I am blocking off time to have lunch. So I can go in here and add a lunch break, but I can make it repeat. So if you see here where it says does not repeat, you want to click that and click the little drop down menu and go to custom is usually what I do. But in this case, I just, you could choose daily if you want to do it every day, if you want to do it every week on Monday. Um, and mine is going to be every weekday, Monday through Friday, 12 to one, I've got lunch. Um, and then again, I could change the color if I want to. Let's do like a nice orange color and then boom, it comes in for all of the days where I will have lunch at 12 o'clock. And so that's consistently going to be on my calendar moving forward. Now let's say we're moving on to Tuesday and this day I have a doctor's appointment um, and it's far away. So I'm gonna block off two hours for that. So I can go in there and put doctor's appointment and then I can even like add the location. Um, so let's say I was going to my allergy doctor. I can literally type it in, pick which location I want to go to and save. So now I know I have a doctor's appointment. I know where I'm going and I know when I have to be there. So again, if I wanted to go in here and edit this, I could just click on the event, click the little pencil and I could change the color. I could also add notes like bring my EpiPen, just little things that I don't want to forget. And it's always going to be here and nicely accessible within my calendar. You also have the option to add people to your calendar invites. So like, let's say, for example, I wanted my husband to know that I had this doctor's appointment. So he knows where I am during this time. I could just invite him via this link and it's going to go straight to his calendar, which is a really nice perk. So now let's say you don't want to use this method and you want to have a bit more separation in your calendars that's where everything comes in here on this left panel so you can see there are different calendars that i've created we've got a family calendar things for friends client sessions for life coaching my man my man my man wellness and fitness so what i could do in this case is add an event so let's say this workout up here if i wanted that to be on a specific calendar i could go to this little drop down menu and select my wellness and fitness tag and boom, now it saves. So when I use these, it's really like when I just want to go the extra mile, I really like to color code seasonally. So these were like all of my fall colored calendar lists that I enjoyed, but honestly, both ways work really well. And it's also very easy to share your calendars. I share them all to myself. So I have a work calendar, I have a personal calendar, and then I also have my real estate calendar, which you can see is checked down here. So I don't have anything happening for this week scheduled yet for my real estate calendar, but it would show up in red. And then if I didn't want it to be there, 
I could just literally click it off. So let's say for example, usually on Fridays, I like to go do apartment tours because I am an apartment locator as well. So if you are in the Houston area, more specifically, I specialize in North Houston, but I've got all of Houston on lock. If you're looking for an apartment, it's completely free for you to work with me. And I would be so happy to help you along that journey. I'll just put all my information for apartment locating and my realtor information in the description box if y'all wanna check that out. But let's say I had to go do some apartment tours and I'm gonna do that 10 to 12, but I want it to be on my real estate calendar. I would just go down here and click Amber Wilcott's real estate, which is supposed to be red. And now it's saved there. So I can like click off if I don't want that calendar to show and I can click back on if I do want that calendar to show. Um, so this is just kind of a brief overview of different things that you can do in Google Calendar. You can also view it by day if that's easier for you. Um, you can view it weekly, which is how I prefer to see it. I like to do like a week at a glance. So this is what I would use um, for scheduling. So I could see like, okay, I've got availability, for meeting with clients on these specific days and different things like that if I wanted to do like a full month at a glance. But basically you just pick the option that you feel works best for you and you can literally use this to make your life so much easier and so much more manageable. If you do have any other questions about Google Calendar or what you can do with Google Calendar, just comment down below and let me know and I'm happy to provide some assistance because I promise you this is such an amazing productivity tool. And then I'll also link my real estate information below as well. Even if you are not in Houston, I am still here to help you. I can refer you to an amazing realtor in the city where you live. So I'm happy to provide referrals too. All right, let's get back to the video. All right, next up we've got step three, which is creating routines. This is extremely valuable when you're trying to create a schedule that's both sustainable and productive. But there is a key piece to remember. When you're creating these routines, you cannot be rigid with any type of rigid system or steps that you have to follow it makes it so much harder which then takes away that sustainability piece because if it's really difficult you're not going to want to do it you're not going to have motivation and you may also be lacking discipline and that combination just means it's not going to get done but if you think about your routines as something that's fluid flexible and adjustable it gives you a little bit more leeway to actually achieve your goals and accomplish what you are working toward without being so strict on yourself for example let's say in your morning routine you want to make sure that you have time for skincare for reading for prayer and meditation to make breakfast and to get in a workout well it's kind of hard to accomplish all five of those things every single day at the same exact time life happens sometimes you're tired and sometimes things just come up so it's a lot easier for you to say okay today i don't have two hours for a morning routine maybe i only have 30 minutes so from that list of five what are one or two things that i can choose to focus on during that 30 minute time where I'm still gonna set myself up for success. I'm still going to pour back into myself and enjoy my morning routine, but I'm also not gonna feel super pressured to rush through everything simply because I felt like I wanted to get it done. The key is flexibility. You have to learn how to give yourself grace. There are times where I'm just so tired in the morning, like I don't have all of the energy to do all the things that need to be done or all the things that I would like to get done. And so I have to be realistic with myself and just pick one thing to focus on. That way I still feel like I was pretty productive with my morning and I can go into the rest of my day feeling accomplished and feeling like I made some type of progress even if I wasn't able to get every single thing done. And step number four is batching similar tasks together. You hear a lot about batching when it comes to content creation, and that's actually something that I do as well. I'm actually working on a new series for my Instagram for 2025, and it's a fashion series. But instead of me every single Friday making sure I'm up at a certain time, having an outfit laid out, doing hair and makeup, one Friday a month, I can just film four different fashion videos and upload them to my Instagram. So I've saved so much time that I would have to spend on doing my hair and my makeup over and over again. And I've been able to just do it all at once, knock it out and get it accomplished. And that concept of batching can work in so many other areas of your life, even if you're not someone who's a content creator. So one thing that I do for this in my work as a career coach is I set aside an entire morning block 
for focus time. And then on my Google Calendar, inside of that event, I write down different notes of what I do during my focus time. I may be checking in on clients or looking over resumes or reviewing LinkedIn profiles and adding notes. It just could be a variety of different things, whatever applies to your life. But I have a list of most of the things that I will do during that time because they're all similar. They are all centered around working with my clients and they are all centered around me. I don't have to meet with anyone, I don't have to collaborate with anybody. I have tasks that I have to get done. I can block them all together during that one focus time. And then that way I've knocked out a bunch of tasks just in one simple time block. And don't think that I've forgotten about creating a time block for rest and recovery. That is actually our fifth tip, which is to prioritize rest while you are building this schedule because resting is what produces sustainability. A balanced schedule is not just about getting things done, checking things off of your to-do list. It's about making time for things that are important to you and things that you value in life. And one of those things should be rest because rest is extremely important and it's very vital to actually be able to keep going and achieve everything you've set out to do. So just like you would schedule a workout or a meeting for work or time to go have lunch with a friend, you need to schedule time for rest and relaxation and be specific about what you are going to do. Because if you say, okay, every Wednesday night from 6 to 8 p.m., I'm gonna make that my self-care time block and I'm just gonna focus on me. But if you haven't identified exactly what you're gonna be doing Wednesday at 6 p.m., the time rolls around and you're just kind of sitting there wasting your time and you end up doing things that are not resting. So you have to kind of reframe your mindset to realize that rest is productive, schedule it in, and just make a list of potential things that you could do. Maybe you could catch up on a book that you've been reading, or maybe you could spend some time, extra time on skincare, or maybe on body care. I just got this new vitamin C serum that's supposed to like even out the skin tone in your body. So every Wednesday during my self-care time, maybe that's something I can incorporate. It doesn't have to be anything extremely long or extremely time consuming um, or extremely difficult to do. You wanna make it as easy as possible, even if it's just laying in the bed, watching your favorite TV show or allowing yourself to have dinner in bed. Something just very simple that gives you that time to really rest and rejuvenate. All right, so those were our five tips in order to create a balanced and sustainable schedule, but y'all know I'm not letting you go without a bonus tip and that is to review and adjust the schedule weekly to figure out what's genuinely working for you so at the end of each week or beginning of each week i like to do it on sundays just do a little review a little audit of how things went the week before and then make adjustments as needed figure out what worked figure out what didn't and figure out what changes need to be made this reflection time is really going to help you kind of fine tune your approach and also stay aligned with your goals. You may notice that you're doing way too much of one thing that's really not helping you get to the finish line of where you would like to be. So you can reduce that area and maybe add to other areas in your life to really create that genuine balance. Overall, creating a sustainable and balanced schedule is really about making your time work for you. It is a process of trial and error, honestly, but I feel like if you just kind of try out some of the steps that I've mentioned in this video, you're on your way to creating a very peaceful, balanced life that you can truly enjoy. Thank you all so much for watching this video. And if you're interested in more tips on elevating your lifestyle or creating a balanced life, then you're in the right place and go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.